Hey guys, I'm Justin. I'm this year's drum major. I'm Alexa. I'm this year's trumpet section leader. And today we're going to go over a few basics and fundamentals for how the trumpet section carries their instruments and how they move with their instruments and how we march as a band. So right now we're going to go over a few positions called to the ready, attention, and horns up positions. These positions are unanimous across the band and allow us to have uniformity throughout the band on how we carry our instruments. So right now, as you can see, Alexa is currently in the rest position. This position is for if we're just kind of standing there, not really doing anything. You can kind of loosen up, even if you're still in formation, stay in formation, stay where your dot is, and that way we can get back to everything. But right now she's at rest position, just kind of chilling. Next is to the ready. In this position, she is currently in second position and is holding her horn down uh, by her hips. Her right hand is holding the trumpet and her left hand is gently resting on top of, the, of her right hand. Next is attention. At attention position, her mouthpiece is going to be about at her nose or at eye level, roughly around there. Her feet are going to be in first position and in this way you're going to hold your trumpet the way you normally would when you're playing. And finally is horns up position. You're going to want it to be at about 15 to 20 degree, degree angle above horizontal to the ground. As you can see, she is holding her trumpet normally with plenty of space between uh, her hand and the instrument to allow for more of a freer stance. She is also in first position and is holding her, sh uh, her posture very well. So to get to these positions, typically the band director or the drum major will call out commands. To get to the ready, well, you'll usually hear, to the ready. Next you'll hear, band, ten, hut, and you'll go to attention. Finally, you'll hear, bands, horns, up, or whenever the drum majors raise their hands, and this way we'll be ready to play for whenever we step off. Okay guys, now I'm going to talk about side carriage which we will do when we're marching up to the field or when we're marching during a parade. So first we'll start with right hand horizontal. Right hand horizontal, you'll want to carry it in your right hand as if your horn is still up and then just bring it down to your side, just like that. And then right vertical. Right vertical is what we'll typically do if we don't have to snap our horns up quickly. We'll only use horizontal if we have to use, do it quickly, but typically we do vertical. Vertical is like this. You're going to want to put your pinky underneath the casing here and your ring finger, I uh, know, your index finger in the finger holder here. And then you can put these two fingers under here or in the uh, ring right here. And you, you're just going to want to let it dangle by your side. This way you have a lot less stress on your wrist and less of a chance of developing carpal tunnel. It's also much more comfortable than holding this the whole time we're marching. And that is what we'll typically do is this. So then he's going to show you right classical. Right classical will be similar to horizontal. You're going to want to keep your right hand as if you're playing the trumpet and then bring it down to your side and keep it vertical. This is a lot more classical. It's, it kind of looks good, but it also puts a lot of strain on your wrist, which is not good for trumpet players or anyone in general. So typically we'll only do this if we have to look good for the president or something. And now he's going to show you left. Left side carriage is only done if your right hand's busy, like if you're carrying a prop or carrying someone else's instrument. And you're just going to want to hold it, and it's typically how you hold your trumpet, and just bring it down. That's all the side carriages that we do. Alright guys, now we're going to go over our feet positions. Our feet positions are unanimous throughout the band and are very important for what visuals we are currently doing at any one point. Believe me, if you're in the wrong position, like, everyone will know it. So, first off, you'll need to know that every single position will be at a right angle, a 90 degree angle. As you can see here, Alexa's feet are currently in first position at a right angle. Right, uh, in first position, your heels are going to be touching, and, uh, it's, like I said, it's going to be at a right angle. Next is second position. You're going to bring your left foot out so that your feet are about equally spaced to your shoulders. You're going to still maintain this 90 degree angle. 
those two are the common ones we will be in in the show. But every now and then we'll be in some more, more specialized positions. Next is third position. In this, you're still going to want to maintain the 90 degree angle, but your left foot heel will be in the arch of your right foot. And next is fourth position. And this, again, 90 degree angle. And what it is, is similar to first position, but you're going to want to bring your foot straight up so that there's a nice line connecting your foot, your left foot, and your right toe tip. And next is fifth position, where you're going to want to bring your left heel into your toe. And those are all the common positions we will be in. Another less common one is parallel first. This is what you likely did in middle school, and that is literally just bring your feet together. We co don't commonly do that, but sometimes we will. But those are all the feet positions. All right, guys, now we're gonna learn how to march. Now, the marching that we do at Greenbrier East is called roll stepping. There is a few other types of marching, like riding the bike, but those generally don't look good, and basically we are the best. So, how we roll step is actually very specific. So we're gonna kinda do this methodically. So to start, let's start in first position. Remember, like I said, first position, heels together at a 90 degree angle. So what I'm gonna have Alexa do is pull out her left foot to start marching. Just like that. So that will always be the first step. Your right foot will still be in the 45 degree angle and your first, uh, your left foot will be, uh, you know, taking a step ready to march. Now a few things I should always mention is again, we always step on our left, step out on our left foot. Unlike the cadets because they're kind of smelly, not gonna lie. And also, to move your foot out, you're gonna wanna gently graze your heel across the ground. Try not to touch it though, but you're gonna wanna shoot your leg out, keeping it as straight as possible. Do not bend your knee. See, as she's taking a step out, she's not bending her knee. So, to actually take a step next is to do similarly with your left foot and then do a full heel to toe roll onto your right foot. Yeah, take a full step. So that is the basics of how you march. So Alexa, do you want to show us taking four steps forward? All right. So that is how we uh, take a few, uh, how we forward march. So next we're gonna learn how to backwards march. Backwards marching is kind of notorious for being pretty difficult. But again, you're gonna wanna start out in first position and then you're gonna shoot your left foot back to your, uh, to your uh, toe. So if, when backwards marching, your heels never wanna to touch the ground and you wanna keep as level as possible. So you will always be on your platforms and it's gonna take a lot of ab and leg strength to make this happen. But if you'd like to show us what a backwards marching step looks like, See how very clean and steady she is as she does it. So a few things that we'll also want to learn are to how to stab and how to place our feet after we're done. To stab is what we do at whenever we're switching from forwards marching to backwards marching. Alexa, do you want to show us four steps forward with a stab and then four steps back? So you're going to want to shoot your right foot out into the platform position just as if you would whenever you're backwards marching. And that way you can have a steady platform, a steady basis to start backwards marching. So whenever we stop marching, especially out of coming out of forward march, how we stop is by placing our right foot down with the platform at a 45 degree angle just as if it would be in first position. Again, you're going to want to platform on your right foot and bring your left foot up to meet your right foot in first position. Alexa, would you like to show us that? And that is how we halt. Similarly for backwards marching, it's exactly the same. We are going to show you the lateral slide. And Justin will show you the lateral slide. So, um... 
basically the lateral slide is where you you keep your horn facing the audience probably but like you 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 move horizontally so Justin will show you what that looks like That is what the horizontal slide looks like. Box drill is a drill in which you march in the shape of a box. You go forward eight counts and eight steps, then you lateral slide to the left in eight steps, and then you march backwards eight steps, then you lateral slide again eight steps back to where you began. Justin will now demonstrate. Thank you, Justin. Right box is the same idea, but going to the right. Justin will now demonstrate a right box. Thank you, Justin. So one exercise we'll commonly do to help loosen up our bodies is called the Hindu exercise. The Hindu exercise is performed in segments and helps loosen up each part of the body as we go down. It starts within four counts, you lower your head to your chest. Next, in four counts, you're gonna wanna bring your shoulders forward and in. And then, over the next eight counts, you're gonna wanna bend over your back. Try and do the upper back in the first four, and then the lower back in the last four. Finally, in eight counts, you're gonna wanna collapse your hips and knees so that you are down and as cramped and tight as possible. You're gonna wanna hold that for about eight counts, and then you're gonna wanna reverse it. So in eight counts, you're going to want to straighten your knees and hips. In four counts, your lower back. And then in four counts, your upper back. And then in four counts, roll your shoulders back. And in four counts, lift your head up. Next, you're going to want to go into releve position and hold that for four counts. And then come back down after four counts. And then your muscles will be looser and ready to start marching. So to put this all together, I will clap for Lawson. And it goes like five, six, seven, eight, head, shoulders, upper back, lower back, knees and hips, hold, back up, Lower back, upper back, shoulders, head up, releve, hold, back down. And that is how we do the Hindu exercise.